The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Oh, yeah! This is the Cigar Authority. Have uh, you any imported cigars? The authority on everything cigar, in and out of the cigar industry. We are on a mission from God. With your host... A jelly donut! David Garofalo. How did it get here? Mr. Jonathan. I hear you. And I care. Barry Stein. I can use my spare glove compartment underwear as a napkin. And Ed Sullivan. They don't have a listing for Mr. Wonderful. What uh, spelling did you use? It's time to light them up. Smoke if you got them. It's time for the Cigar Authority. I got a fever. And the only prescription is more cowbell. Light them up, light them up, light them up, everybody. Saturday, May 11th, 2019. <laughs> We've all heard it. Smoking is bad for you. But some are calling that fake news. Smoking cigars is good for you, and we're going to tell you why today. Get your wife, phone the neighbors, call the kids. Welcome, everybody, to The Cigar Authority. And you're listening to The Cigar Authority, now in its 10th year, making it the longest continually running cigar podcast. Awarded the Ambassadors of Cigars by Cigar Journal Magazine. Awarded the Top 10 Educational Podcast by Podbean four years in a row. The Cigar Authority is the most listened to cigar podcast in the world. Cigar Radio at its finest. The Cigar Authority is a proud member of the United Podcast Network. You catch the podcast on demand at any time or our daily blog at thecigarauthority.com. Okay, so this is uh, one of the cigars from the care package. And um, my apologies in advance to everybody that got it because the idea of why I repeated maybe the first time repeating a, a cigar for the care package or, or very few times that's ever happened. Um, but we, we ended up changing up the size anyway. But what happened was there was new packaging done for La Giana. And this is the 25th anniversary of La Giana. It came out in 1994. And uh, the packaging changed twice beforehand and for the 25th anniversary uh, being changed again. And what we want to tell you is when there's a packaging change, um, it doesn't change the taste of the cigar. But as things would happen, uh, we expected it in on a certain date and to be able to get it into the care package. It was already uh, figured in and um, it didn't make it in time. So we got stuck to actually send out the old version of it, which is exactly the same cigar. Um, the band is different, though, so ba- it's going to taste different. Right. The band is different in the pack, and the box is different, uh, which I have right here, because, of course, it did come in right after that. Yeah. So we just missed. So um, Does it surprise you, though? Latin no, America, no, no, it isn't. Late to the party? So this is, this is what happens, and here's the box as it is, and um, it, it, it's a little different than other boxes because it's a draw. So you open the box out of the draw and um, get it out there. Okay. okay. So here's the box, um, the, the bottom part, which is a tray with the cigars in it. And then as you put it down, it snaps into the top like this. It's pretty slick. So it's something different. And, uh, and uh, for the people listening on the podcast, which is most of us, I'm sure that yes. was enthralling radio. Yeah. There's a couple of grooves cut out. So you slide the drawer top out, and the box lid slides into these grooves and hits the perfect angle for displaying yeah. the so, cigars. It's like a dance move, big box, little box. Yeah. So it, it ends up being every time that actually the box is, you know, if you – cigar shop owners that are out there listening you open a box of cigars up and it opens up to a 45 degree angle yeah and for about on a- three days the hinge works right and then some jackass opens it all the way and then the thing opens all the way forever so this defeats that purpose that, that makes it so it, it's going on a i don't know uh, more than 45 degrees say a 60 degree angle yeah. uh and it's 62.6 all degrees yeah by my so, assessment i would have gone with 69 yeah. giggity yeah Whatever the number is, I don't know. We should measure that out someday. But the packaging, it, it makes the cigar look like it's a different cigar. And that's what ends up happening when you take take a dramatic change. Uh, I'm saying, even with the band, the band has some more foil to it. There's uh, white in the band, so it kind of makes the cigar pop more. Yeah. It makes it look darker when... If you put them next to each other, they're really not. They're the same, right? Right. Cover the band up and look at it. It's the same exact cigar. But I know it's going to already start that uh, for good or bad, you know, hopefully the idea is, wow, the cigar tastes even better than it used to. But I'm telling you, 
It shouldn't taste any different because it's the exact same cigar. No, and it always reminds me of our friends at uh, Hammer and Sickle when they lost the trademark icon. Right. They had to sit in their office and remove the icon band from every cigar. Yeah. And people said it was a different cigar when they just removed the band yeah, themselves. Yeah, yeah. It ends up changing there too. So anyway, uh, we're smoking uh, the La Giana Havana Maduro. Tell us about that, Barry. Well, as you mentioned, today's first cigar is the La Giana Havana Maduro, and it's manufactured in Honduras for United Cigars. We're about to fire up the 7 by 48 Churchill, and it's a Honduran Puro with a Maduro wrapper. It is part of the Cigar Authority Care Package, and a single cigar will set you back $7.99 by a box of 20 is $135.99, which is a savings of almost $24 or 15% off the box price at twoguyscigars.com. If you're too far away from a brick-and-mortar retailer that carries it, Try twoguyscigars.com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com. So, and remember, 25 years ago. So this is a 7x48 because that is a Churchill size. As years went on, people started adding numbers to the Churchill size and made it a 50 and a 52 and different like that. But 25 years ago, this was the size, so it's still the size. So uh, let's give it a cut and light and see what it's all about. It's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo is the brand. While all other brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. Excellence. Cold drawer has a hint of prune and chocolate. I was going to go with rum raisin. Well, I want to remind everybody of this cigar, and if you go way back into the bowels of history of the Cigar Authority. What an awkward turn of phrase that was. (laughs) Turn Jonathan on a little bit. This was raisin toast. This was the cigar. And I can see that. All right. So. Raisin. Raisin. Oh, because we haven't heard that drop enough. This is the cigar. So keep that in mind as you're smoking the cigar and see if you get a little the cinnamon swirl on the on the raisin toast with the butter on it. And this was the cigar. But it's it. butter on raisin toast. <laughs> it is buttered raisin toast. All right. It is not. It's oh, not God. like the butter on the You got to push them, Sean, don't no, you? This is the, you got to push them. This is the raisin toast. Let's light her up. We're going to light our cigar today with the Vertigo Cyclone 2. The Vertigo Cyclone 2 features three jets, a flip top, and an easy adjustment wheel at the bottom all around the patented Vertigo big-ass tank. And this lighter retails for $14.99. It's the Vertigo Cyclone 2. And why is it number two? They've improved it from the Cyclone, which is their number one seller by far. And made it a little better. And what they did is make it so it doesn't heat up at the at the very top of it. They put a double wall yeah, they did. on it. And uh, if, if especially you, if you're a big ring gauge guy and you're using your lighter for a longer period of time. This is a 48 ring, so it's going to light pretty fast. But you're one of those guys smoking the 60s and 70s and stuff. You probably want this one because it's not going to heat up. Yeah, you can hold your fingers right over the yeah. edge of that. doesn't even barely get warm. All right, so packaging changes. Do they make the cigar taste different? And the answer is yes and no. No, it really doesn't make the cigar taste different. But psychologically, it does. Well, some companies use the package change to also make a factory change. So you uh, could have, in some cases, the cigar actually be a different cigar. Yeah, could be the blend is very close. They it's could. similar. Somebody buys a brand from somebody else. They take it even to another country and things like that. And then they or, say. Or if you had a dress box and you went to a naked cedar box, then you might have the cedar in part more. It taste. could. Yeah. So those uh, that don't understand dress boxes, that's the what people think as the cardboard box with the paper wrapped around. That's a wood box too, by the way. Yeah. But, but it's the shielded wrapped, by the yeah, paper. Yeah. They, the little edges are even covered, wrapped around. Well, very it's cheap called wood. a filetta. Very cheap Yeah, it's wood. like plywood. Yeah. Yeah. Some, sometimes the hinge actually on those is tape. They put some tape and connect it and that wood to, to there. Then when they wrap the thing, that hinge is there. So you notice if you ever push that back and you break that, the next thing you know, that piece of wood is not even connected. It's all floppy. Yeah. Right. It, the thing I'm glad of is they went away from those cheap hinges mostly. You know the ones I mean that pop out yeah, and have just, the points on them. They would them. just shoot it in between the layer of wood. Yep. Yeah. And how many cuts did you get oh over the God. years from those? 
Yeah. And, and they got away from, in those days, they would nail the box closed. That is the absolute worst. You got your hand pain. in there, yep. and the, you go to reach and grab, and someone didn't take the nail out, and the thing just slams down on your and thumb. And you'd have to pry it sometimes. It was really in there good. And, and, and sitting in the humidor, the nail rusted, and then the next thing you know, it pries into your finger and rusted nail. And the, the things that happen it's with those mistake. nails. But the or funniest you, one yeah. was when I watched you, and you had to get a screwdriver. Because yeah. the box was screwed. Screwed closed. <laughs> so I, I think they figured it out that you, you don't make it as difficult as possible for <laughs> the consumer to actually enjoy the product. Make it so that they can open the thing up. I kind of like the idea of having to earn my way into the yeah. box. What, some stores would actually open the lid and the nail would still be in there and hanging back at the 45-degree angle we're talking about and hanging there. And you'd go to get a cigar out of the box, and by putting your hand in there, you'd make the thing actually close, and the nail would hit you in the <laughs> hand. And again, another, another move not good for the consumer going into the store and say, oh, grab one of those cigars, boom. You know, it's like a, a trap. I have very delicate hands. I don't, yeah. I don't need you any see, holes in You ever in see them. the movie Flash Gordon? Flash Gordon, mm. Savior of the Universe. There oh. was a scene where they give put, me your lunch money right now. They had to put the hand in. <laughs> you had to put your hand in the stump as a test of manhood. And there was a creature in there with, that would hit you with its tail. That was like a nail. Okay. So it was basically the same concept. Yeah. It just made me think in a movie. Yeah. I probably should have kept that internally because it was almost as interesting as your coin story. There we go. <laughs> I, I, I don't think anything could be that, as interesting as that. That's a cigar bidge giveaway that went away. You remember box openers? Box they were op everywhere for a while yeah. to pry the nail out. Correct. So built into this thing was a way to cut through the tape of it, which was just a, a sharpened piece of metal. That not we like call a that a knife. No, no, not like a knife. No. Very, very dull. No, it was a dull, sharp piece of metal. Correct. Yes. And that would end up making so you could scorn the... The um, not the cellophane that was on it, but the the paper right. chaletta, the, the filetta they call it, that would wrap all the way around, and you'd cut through that, and then, and then pry. Yep, the, you'd stick that thing in there and pry it, and then it would have a hook on it that you could pull. pull the nail out. And I got some old ones uh, from back in the day, but that would be manufactured with give it with your name with their names on it and stuff. And oh, here's a box, op uh, pry pry it open thing, and um, here. You know, Fuente always had the nails in there, and I'll tell you, um, somebody in New Hampshire is when it happened, and at Rockingham Mall down here, uh, not that Rockingham Mall, across the street was a place called Rockingham Mall before the mall was even built, and I had heard somebody actually, the nail went into their hand at that shop, and a lawsuit happened, and Fuente stopped it that day and said, okay, no more putting the nail in the box. No kidding. And then it gets copied all the way through. And is anybody putting the nails in the boxes? Do you see it? you still see it? Tatuaje, they're monster series. Tatuaje monsters. Monster. Yeah. Stop putting in the nails in the boxes. There's no need. You're, you're not keeping anybody out. You're, I don't know. It's just a. I can't imagine somebody winning that lawsuit, though, because the nail is meant to hold the lid shut. And it's doing its job. Yep, but it's not meant to stab the guy in the in the hand, and that's what it did. It's a different thing when people put lawsuits, putting their finger in a cutter and it cuts. It's supposed to cut, and therefore they lose the lawsuit because it did exactly what it's supposed to do. That nail is supposed to keep you out of it. You're in. It was opened, and a nail stabbed. You know, if you went and bought a piece of jewelry in a store, and all of a sudden the shod glass came crashing in your hand, you got a lawsuit. The, the shod glass wasn't supposed to, the glass from the cabinet wasn't supposed to smash in your hand. Correct, but the nail in the box is supposed to be the nail in the box. It did its job. It's the retailer's job to take the nail out. If the, that guy so didn't maybe, do it, it's not they, Fuente's fault. Nope. The guy who owns the cigar shop so, is an idiot. So sue so the cigar shop. Right. Just take the nail out of the box. Don't put it in there in the first place. And I and most aren't, so that's the good news of what there is. But right now, let's get to uh, the matchup of the week brought to you by VS. VS means versus, but it stands for Victor Sinclair Cigars. Who would win this hypothetical battle? And today, be able to be free from junk mail or free from email scam. Isn't that the same thing? Nope, because it's junk mail email, but the scam ones. So if I sent you a deal on cigars or something as email, you might call it email junk, but I want email scam. It's very uh, valuable deals on cigars. I want those. Yeah. 
I don't and want the scam ones. Barry, Barry knows that I send him emails every week to say, Barry, is this a scam? <laughs> is this real or not? Should I click the link? Yeah. Ew. No, right. And, and 99% of the time you tell me no, and I have that feeling that it's there, and I go, oh, but look. You it's know, like the last the, donut in the box. It's yeah, talking to you. Yeah, there's <sighs> bait. There's bait there that says, oh, behind this curtain is is this thing or whatever it Maybe is. Maybe that or, prince really did will you the money. Or that your website is ready to shut down or all the scam mm-hmm. stuff. There's so much scam. Um, scam happens also with mail, uh, but I would say less of it because you have the U.S. post office that'll, uh, it's actually breaking the law, major right. law if you do that. Um, but I, I do get a lot of junk mail still. You don't get a lot of junk mail, but w- which one do you want to stop? I think I would stop the scamming emails just in case. Yeah, that's what I would stop. Yeah, I've I've never been one to bo- be bothered by junk mail. No, it's kindling for starting the fireplace up. But I I look at the mail as you as you see, and you do it too. Yeah. We open we, it over the trash. Over the trash. That's where it goes. A bump, 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 bump. And here's the it, the ones we save are bills, right? Basically, correct. So uh, now, if we could get rid of bills, that's what I would choose yeah, to get rid of. Yeah. Well. It, a lot of people just the billing just happens via email also. Yep. But uh, the email scams they got they got to stop with this email scam stuff or have a little button report. We got to have like you know how I have the sound effect with the crickets. We got to have that for Dave when he has a shitty verses like this. Yeah. You don't like that? It's weak. <coughs> Y'all weak. <laughs> <laughs> We nice. all know this. Nice yes. comeback. <laughs> all right. Uh, big thank you to all those out there who like and share our podcast, especially those who also subscribe on YouTube. It helps so much. We really appreciate it. We're seeing a lot of action there. So uh, thank you to those that are doing that. Uh, but right now, uh, let's get to it because uh, this is the show today. Um, well, cigars you are good for you. I'm, gonna, uh, I'm just going to reach in here and see if you're trying to pull a fast on anybody. You're going to double dip here? I'm going to double dip and All see right. if side by side comparison. It's the same cigar or not, and this will give me a so, chance so to let's cut let's look at the wrap. I just want to look at the wrapper. It's beautiful. Yeah. Happens to be a little darker. It's but a little darker, but every single one in that box is a little darker. Right. So that's just, that's color yeah. sorting. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, um, Scott's tasting good. It's burning well. Oh, it's, the burn uh, line is unbelievable. Yeah. Um, this is, uh, the folks from Davidoff make this cigar. Yep. Just uh, this is a classic Maduro. Cold draw is identical. It is, you know, the idea was sweetness. not to yeah. The idea was not to overpower the filler, so you wouldn't taste the sweetness from the Maduro wrapper. That's the real Maduro wrapper, aged for a long period of time and gone through the correct processes. Um, so again, this is old school because it's twenty five years ago. They didn't even know how to do it fake. Right, uh, and everybody know, and that's listening to the show, if you look at, it, the, I mean, everybody that's part of the care package, you can look at the cigar and tell it's not treated in any way. Right, right. And there are some Maduros out there that are a little yeah. unnaturally dark. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Stained, oiled. Jonathan has to pay for the second one, right? He didn't just get that free. Ah. Oh. I mean, keep an eye on it. All right. He, he may just keep taking more. You know what happens to rats around here? What happens no. to rats? Snitches get stitches. Oh, no. Yeah? They just get stitches. But That's I a, just heard Jonathan New York thing. is weak. <laughs> yeah. So. He's, he's weak. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I've been fighting uh, federal, state, and local government over taxes uh, on cigars. Um, and without exception, when you go to these hearings, the first thing you hear is not a question. It's said as a fact. We all know smoking is bad for you, and that's how it all starts. And then they go into the hearing of what it is. And you only, you only get to speak once, and you got to wait your turn to yeah. be able to do it because I want to interrupt each time, and I go, well, where are you getting your information from? You know, as these things come out, but they come out as factual. This is it. It's not um, – n- nobody's denying it. I'm denying it. Uh, it's always a fact, and the fact is it's not. Um, not a fact at all. I think it's actually the opposite. So the, the statement we're going to try to make today, or I'm going to try to make today, is cigars are good for you. And let's see if we can make that argument for the opposite of the argument that they make. So I've been selling cigars now 34 years, lots of customers, hundreds of millions of sales. Um, I've never seen my customer come in, a customer come in, ever, with oxygen tanks, 
like happens with cigarettes and things yep. like that. Uh, no voice boxes. Yep, never seen it with the throat operations and all that stuff. I'm talking 34 years of millions of sales, and I've never seen it. Knock on wood, um, I haven't seen it. So why, why would that be? We don't sell cigarettes, by the way. Well, we, cigars are different, and unfortunately, they've never been classified as different in the public mind. Public mind is like it's smoking. Smoking is smoking. Right. Smoking no. is smoking. That's what they say. We all know smoking is bad for you, and that not true. You, uh, if you want to make the argument cigars are not good for you, there's a different argument, and we can get a whole argument of, of that, that cigarettes may be bad for you. Cigarette companies say cigarettes are not bad for you, and there's underlying reasons for that also why they would say such a thing. They, they bring in... Uh, Things that um, vape companies came in and said, um, you know, here it is, Philip Morris coming in and saying that the vape isn't good for you and stuff. That's because they created the next project already, by yep. the way, Heat Not Burn. And if they're, they're, they're killing one of their products on purpose to wipe out a whole industry to go to the others. But again, you don't get to pick and choose here. You get one time to go up there. But as this goes on, it's like, and I hear it in politics too, that people just take a sound bite and just go with whatever it is. Yep. But the fact of the matter is, no, that's not true either. It should be like a, a bell when somebody says the wrong thing and bing, nope, that's not true either. But it's completely said like, this is the fact. And thankfully we got some senators that, that have signed on to the bills to exempt cigars, they realize there's a difference. Right. So it's a different if it's a different product, and, and we're stuck in with everything else. Mm -hmm. But stop saying that smoking is bad for you because that's not the fact. So um, I've been personally smoking cigars for over 35 years myself, uh, working about working every day, just about every day. Um, we're talking seven days a week. I really get sick. I really get a cold. I really get the flu. I really get Just for it. the people who are having a hard time with David's Boston accent, he's saying rarely, not really, rarely, rarely. get sick. Um, I love cigars. I smoke them all the time. And um, I'll even say as far as a company with all the employees we have, everybody comes to work. There's very, very few sick days that, so that happen, right? Barry uh, holds the record. I think. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> But um, it's it's not from the smoking aspect of it. You can guess other reasons why Barry would not come in. But it's, I got it's a hangover. Yeah. So uh, let let's look at famous people uh, we've all heard of and how um, cigars may or may not have affected them. Uh, let's take Samuel Clemens, aka Mark Twain, for instance, who said, "I smoke in moderation, only one cigar at a time." His moderation, some say, was 30 cigars a day. He would chain smoke all day long. He would fall asleep with a lit cigar in his mouth and incidentally never lit his house on fire. There we go. But he did die at the age of 74. But he died of severe depression over the loss of his daughter, not from smoking. Then you got George Burns, who smoked cigars every single day, lived to 100. Mm -hmm. You have uh, Sigmund Freud, pretty smart guy, right? But he did smoke cigars all the time. Smoked more than his fair share. Lived to 83. Winston Churchill, another smart guy who smoked all day and night, and uh, he lived to 90. And these people aren't dying from the smoking aspect of it. Comedian Groucho Marx, all day, every day, lived to 86. Thomas Edison, another smart guy. Did he know something we didn't know? Because he lived till his last day while he was smoking cigars until he was 84. And uh, this is back in the days when people didn't live to 84. Now these people are making into well into the 90s, as we know, um, as happened in the cigar industry. Avo Uvesian, 91 years old. Um, Jose Padron, 90 years old. Um, they smoked more than the two cigars a day, um, which is the recommended dose. That's your dose. recommended dose. That's my <laughs> recommended <laughs> dose, right? Um uh, do you all know who Richard Overton was? There was the military guy that smoked up until 112 or whenever he passed away. There we right? go. He was the last American World War II vet and oldest cigar smoker who smoked at least five cigars a day for almost 100 years. He lived to 111 years old. It's an expensive habit. We would have liked to have him I, as a customer. Yeah, I think he started when he was 14 years old or something. A few more years, he would have smoked for 100 years. He only got 97 years of, of cigar smoking in and smoked a lot of them. 
Could it be that cigar smoking is actually good for you? Could our government be totally wrong? And it certainly wouldn't be the first time, right? Shocking. Yeah. Uh, For one, I believe they are wrong most of the time, and cigars are good for you. Uh, So let's dig into the possibilities uh, in a minute. But first, uh, early thoughts here on the La Giana Havana Maduro. Let's get some flavors because it's part of the Cigar Authority care package. Uh, Just as a point of reference, flavor-wise, both cigars, by the way, are identical. The one thing I will say is that the older one does appear to have a tighter burn, but I know it's older. And this it just came in. Correct. I mean, this is this is not just older. We we got to order five hundred boxes of every size in order mm. to get the order in. So the, these have uh, these have at least a year on them. Sure. Uh, but the burn is good on the on the new one. It's just not as as good because it's not sitting around. Right. So tastes the same. If you were blind and folded, you wouldn't know which one. You would one not know the difference. Yeah, a little raisin sweetness, a little uh, toaster. The toast sets a seven, so you kind of got that crisp toast. Yeah, yeah. And you put them together, you got the raisin, the toast, and then you wind up with... Well, you don't have a fat component there, Barron, so you need a little butter. He threw it to you, not I threw the... it to you, man. That was a... Se- there we go. <laughs> I'm sorry, Barry. He kind of threw me with the fat component. You know that. He was going crickets there, and it's on a different palate. <laughs> there we go. But it tasted, right? You taste that. Oh, yeah, for sure. So that, that came back from way, that, way back then. Okay, let's take a break. When we come back, why are cigars good for you? And a surprise. We're live in the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. You're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. To some, tradition is a catchphrase. To us, it's a guiding light. For there can be no great future without reverence for the past. Hammer and Sickle Tradition Series cigars are handmade, employing only time-honored methods. Meticulously crafted of individually selected tobaccos, Tradition Series is a blend of three-year-aged Dominican Viso and Lijero, all finished inside a breathtaking five-year-aged Connecticut shade wrapper. Tradition Series from Hammer and Sickle. Live well. Romeo San Andreas by Romeo y Julieta. The Romeo y Julieta love story with a bold and modern twist. America's favorite love story takes on a modern zeal with this A.J. Fernandez collaboration. Romeo San Andreas by Romeo y Julieta, crafted in Esteli, Nicaragua, is a contemporary take on the rich and robust profile of the Romeo by Romeo collection. This exceptional premium offering employs an aged San Andreas wrapper considered one of the most flavorful leaves used in today's premium cigar market. Handcrafted in Nicaragua by cigar master A.J. Fernandez. Full flavored, dressed in a stunning San Andreas wrapper. Rich and bold profile with notes of dark chocolate, spice, and licorice. And available in four sizes, Robusto, Toro, Pyramid, and Short Magnum. Competitively priced under $10. Romeo San Andreas by Romeo y Julieta. The Romeo y Julieta love story with a bold and modern twist. It's an exquisite day here at the Jensen Estate patio overlooking the 13th green. And we're underway. Jim Jensen has chosen his favorite stick. The Diamond Crown Number no. 4 by J.C. Newman. See the way he holds the cigar, Tom? Mm. Excellent balance and heft. Ooh, he's eyeing the silky Connecticut Shade Wrapper. Fermented twice for the smoothest, richest flavor. And hand-rolled by the Fuente family with a blend of six to seven distinct Dominican and Caribbean basin tobacco leaves. Each lovingly aged for at least five years. Oh, now Jensen's lining up the Diamond Crown. He's got a precision burn, Tom. Mm, Those highly complex flavors with hints of dark chocolate really deliver, Bill. Yes, like all cigars in J.C. Newman's premium diamond crown line. That'd be the highly rated Maximus and the Julius Caesar. Ah, now Jensen's settling in, rolling the rich smoke through his nose. Look at the satisfaction on his face, Bill. Oh, a thing of beauty, Tom. Experience the premium diamond crown brand by J.C. Newman at select retailers or diamond crown lounge near you. Find us on Facebook at J.C. Newman Cigar Co. or visit diamondcrown.com. I want to talk to you today about my friend Glenn Case from Christoph Cigars. I've known him for many years. Glenn is a very nice guy, one of the nicest guys in the industry. Always friendly, always happy. So when I heard his brand Christoph was pissed off, I was surprised. Christoph Cigars have always been known as smooth and rich, and the pissed off Christoph is just that 
But there's something else happening here. A natural San Andreas wrapper, the binder, Indonesian, and the filler, Nicaraguan. And like Glenn Case, the cigar starts off sweet, but then it gets pissed off. And like Bruce Banner, you don't want to piss off Glenn Case about Kristoff cigars. Or do you? Expect some spins and a nicotine kick. Strap yourself in for a ride. Pissed off Kristoff is deceivingly strong. You've been warned. Sold in 10 count boxes, four sizes including Churchill, 6x60, Robusto, and Corona Gorda. The hottest new brand is the Pissed Off Kristoff. Take it for a ride. Since 1964, Padron Cigars have had the same mission. With over 50 years spent to create a perfect cigar, and more than 100 years to create a perfect legacy. The Padron family understands the significance of time. Padron delivers only the finest handmade complex cigars with the flavor of the Cuban heritage, out of which the Padron recipe was born. The Padron mission is simple, exceptional quality of their cigars and not the quantity produced. As a vertically integrated family-owned company, personal attention to every detail is taken in all steps of the tobacco growing and cigar making process. Padron Cigars, they give you the cigar smoker, the confidence that each cigar is the same. Perfect. Padron Cigars, handcrafted since 1964. I want to tell you about my friend Hochi Blanco, a fourth generation Dominican cigar maker known for growing tobacco and producing highly acclaimed cigars for other people. As some things stay the same, other things have to change. Finally, Hochi's factory, Tobacalera Palmer, has produced the cigar that not only belongs to the factory, but pays homage to the cigar rolling room known as La Galera. The La Galera Connecticut blend is special, using an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper surrounding a Dominican blend of Peloto Cubano, Criollo 98, and a varietal that Hochi named T112. With the exception of the wrapper, Hochi grows all of the La Galera tobaccos himself and carefully watches over every step. The flavor smooth, but still offering plenty of flavor in all sizes, paying homage to the people and tools used in the factory. Now for the amazing pot. La Galera, Connecticut has a suggested retail price ranging from $4.95 to $6 and has been awarded the Cigar of the Year by the Cigar Authority. La Galera, Connecticut, creating their own version of the Connecticut cigar because they demand more. Hello and good afternoon. It's Randall Churchill here. My great-grandfather would have loved the Cigar Authority's show. And we're back. I laugh every time I hear that because that's some magic there from Ed Sullivan to pull that off. Uh, we could not get him to give us the no. uh, prop, proper thing, but we got something out of it anyway. We're back. We're smoking the La Giana Havana Maduro Churchill in the old packaging. I'm sorry to say to the care package listeners out there uh, because we hope to have the new one in in time to ship it out to you, but we didn't because we got to get these stuff out uh, before the end of the month. So right. the beginning of the month comes and has it. So. Um, you got the old packaging, but Jonathan re- assures us it's the same exact cigar. Yeah, there's no question. Yeah, but maybe it tastes better with the, uh, I, the, the uh, new band on it. Th- pretty- what's funny that you're saying that is, in my mind, I'm trying to do it both ways and think, okay, I'm smoking this cigar. I'm holding it. It feels better. It feels more regal, and I think that that's affecting the flavor just seems more robust in the new with the new packaging that the the tastes are identical but it's, it just it, seems it, 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 better this is the first time we've done it both ways either yeah just putting it out there the psychology i'm just ignoring that the psychology <laughs> we're going to use the cyclone big, 2 lighter to light our cigar today the the psychology of packaging it's so huge that you know look at ladies pocketbooks and stuff they there'll be a, a, a $50 pocketbook and a $500 pocketbook, and they're both pocketbooks. Well, the thing is, sunglasses are probably the worst. Yeah. The $300 pair, there is no difference between that one and the $50 pair. They're owned by the same company. Yeah, and they're both plastic. And, 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 and both and, over. And that goes for Even most glasses. Even the $50 glasses. one's too much money. Most glasses, there's only two or three companies that make glasses frames. So um, 
little surprise that I did last year, and I'm going to do it again, is we sell tickets to two guys' anniversary party that we do every single year and give away a big prize and everything. And um, we do it to our customers to come into the store. And we sell that out on usually one day at um, the stores. And um, I last year, and I'm doing it again now, is I held back about 20 tickets or so. I hate when you do this. But it's because we have fans that are far away and maybe want to come up and they, they don't have phones so now they do now they have a phone and they can call us um if they want a ticket so what you get at the anniversary party is you get 18 18 18 cigars and all those manufacturers will be there the biggest names in the cigar industry they're all going to be there it's a sit down dinner uh, it's five course dinner. You get eighteen cigars. When you no trick or treat thing, you walk in and you get your your package, and it'll come with something also. Um, and a sit down dinner. There'll be a Frank Sinatra singing guy uh, because the it's it's based on Las Vegas is the theme. We got a couple of comedians, and it's a game show throughout the throughout the show. And the winner gets tickets for six. First class, round trip beer fare to Las Vegas, a suite in Las Vegas for all six, uh, and all kinds of special things that are going to happen uh, with you, some experiences like maybe uh, race car driving and all kinds of crazy stuff I got planned for you, but it hopefully will be an experience you'll never forget, and um, that's the grand prize. At it. There'll be other prizes too, but that's the grand prize. If you want to come and you're far away, here's your opportunity. Uh, give us a call at Two Guys Smoke Shop now. The phone number is 603 898 2221. A lot of twos there, I've noticed. A lot of twos. I tried to get 2222, but somebody, somebody had, had it. That. So it was 2221. Um, call us, and we have some tickets aside for Cigar Authority listeners. So I'll say that number one more time while you go get your pen. Tickets are $225. Believe me, your $225 is covered when you walk in the door. Then it's an unbelievable night. Um, and certainly we can sell these to anybody, but this is a little something for the Cigar Authority. Listeners, because we appreciate you. Uh, the phone number again is 603-898-2221. So back to a cigar is good for you. So let me take another hit here. Are they, Dave? They are. Are cigars good for you? I'm going to make the argument, and we'll see where this goes. And it's a valid argument. There we go. Um, so why are cigars good for you? I think cigars are a good friend during times of reflection. You're going deep on this. Is it true? You get, yeah. get a cigar and just go outside and just reflect on life or whatever you're thinking about, and you have a cigar. and All the time. Don't think. Uh, a cigar is a great psychiatrist. That's the, for me, that's the best aspect of cigar smoking. Because Imagine you, how crazy he'd be if he oh, didn't forget smoke. It. If I didn't smoke, I'd be today. nuts. But how many times do people come in here and they're stressed out and they buy a cigar? Yeah, first couple of puffs in, they're relaxed. They're holding you're a, you're about a third of the way through your cigar, and you're still an asshole. So I, I will forever how, be one. How has that changed anything? You know, if you sit next to you, it kind of rubs off. Fair enough. <laughs> Stay away from mine. A cigar is a relaxant. When need, and it's also, uh, I would say, an organic tranquilizer. Calms the nerves, you know, when you're stressed out. I say, by the way, when you are stressed out, don't go to a very, very expensive cigar because you're stressed out, and, you, and it's going to take a while and before you really start enjoying the cigar because you're stressed out. But I think it calms the nerves, but also can be a stimulant at sometimes when needed. So it, it finds its spot of whatever it is. So, you know, I got things to do or whatever, and I'm like, oh, my God, I got, after work, I got to go do this, 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 this. I have a cigar. Maybe to say, okay, let me relax a little bit, whatever. But, okay, now I'm actually pumped up and ready Ducks to go. Ducks are in a row. Yeah. Um, it is an all-natural product. It's leaves. And those leaves are put through rigorous fermenting and cleaning process. Zero calories. Zero fat. Well, unless you eat it. I think there's calories if yeah? you eat it. Yeah, it's a leaf. It's like a, a lettuce. Did you hear that, Jonathan? Zero fat. Yeah, I don't care what you say. There's okay. sometimes a fat component. Uh, it's been around. Phones are ringing, by the way. People we who are listening to Here the show go. right now are calling. Operators all around <laughs> hand. <laughs> they are standing uh, by. Right. Uh, problem is we only have one phone. 
So uh, if you get a, do people get busy signals anymore? No, because the next no, we, line. We had four lines. Yeah. Phones ringing everywhere. Yeah. Um, it's been around longer than America itself. So guys have been around a long time. If you think of a product that's been sold that long, a traded product, there's nothing older than that as well, a traded product. Turmeric. Really? Yeah, it's an ancient spice. Cloves. Saffron. Really? Maybe. Cauliflower. Okay. Uh, that's all good, but not necessarily proves that it's good for your health, right? And that's what we're trying to prove. I found it can relieve pain. It makes and Barry more tolerable. I can uh, attest to that. You're in a foul mood today. Oh, shut is, up. He is, something's <laughs> up with him. I, I, I meant to even say it before the show even started. Something's up with him. He's fighting with somebody. Or something's going on. <laughs> So have a cigar and just yeah, I have two of them going. There we go. All right. Because you need it. <laughs> I haven't worked so far. Uh, you, you ever do? You, you ever consider that it relieves pain? I never put two and two together. No. That it How does. about with your headaches and things like that? But, you got a massive uh, headache and you have a cigar and the headaches calms down. But or, you, yeah, I mean, you sit down on the back deck or something, and you know. Feeling a little achy, whatever, it just relaxes you. And if you relax, the pain kind of eases up a little bit. Remember I had the, so, kidneys, yeah. I had the kidney stone? The Takes pain a- was so friggin' bad, it was unbelievable. Mm. Nothing I could do about it. I lit a cigar and sat back. And with the Flomax, I- you created an extra holder because yeah. it opened up <laughs> But uh, But I think, things. I don't know, it, it seemed like... Oh, if the pain was at a nine or whatever it was, and I lit a cigar or something, it was 8. like five at seven. Because you were thinking, oh, should I call an ambulance? No, no, I'll have a I cigar. would never. I would never. Right. Well, what did I tell you when, when you when you're hurting or you're not feeling good? Take some deep breaths, relax, slow down. Yeah, and the cigar does that. Yeah, you're taking the. the I'm going by my stuff, and I'm telling you, it, mm-hmm. it's relief pain, uh, soothes the brain, and calms the human body for a refreshing sleep. You ever have a cigar before you go to bed? You can't say I have. Really? Not a lot of smoke in the house. Ah, uh, you need you to buy, get a house. You need to buy yourself a house. Yeah, you got to get a house. Uh-uh. Have a cigar and then go to bed and nice. Uh, I don't take medication. I try never. I don't even take aspirins. I try not to take anything. And I'd rather take olive oil for cholesterol if that was a problem, a glass of red wine for the heart, or a nice cigar for the mind, body, and soul instead of drugs. And that's what I do. I think it's a natural thing, and I'm okay with it. Uh, if I have to take drugs or something, I, the I take it. The only exception, I think, to that, your whole natural claim is yeah. uh, I made you cauliflower pizza this week. I ate it. And you bitched. I ate it. But you bitched. Mm-hmm. And I only made it for you. I learned how to make it just for you. And I appreciate it. And is that part of your why you're so bitchy it today? Could be. Yeah. Because okay. you haven't been on it. Someone has to. And I'm the guy dieting, and you're the one bitchy. You'd rather I eat some bad stuff again? No, I, yeah. I, I, I We're not quite the, there. I skipped the snack authority today just not to eat the snack. That's pretty good. There we go. Um, but it's all about the smoke itself. Can that be good for anyone? Yes. The smoke itself. Uh, smoke doesn't kill you. It kills what's bad for you. Smudging, they call it. Here we go. So if you're feeling sick, stuck, negative, sluggish, or even depressed, it may be due to some um, energy around you that doesn't allow positive energy to enter. Wow, you really went deep. I went deep as I could. Jesus. Um, you're saying it, cigars have a little bit of feng shui to it? There's something to it. it the smoke itself. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it can, it can include your emotion, your energy, your mental, spiritual, and even body of your environment, even in your home, office, or any other physical space. Requires some cleansing, and smoke does that cleansing. And Mark McCosey wrote an article about this, and it is called Smudging, and he recommends cigars for it. Absolutely. So um, negative it smells energy. better than burning sage because that shit smells Here bad. There we go. Uh, negative energy can also be extremely har- harmful on mental and physical state and uh, turn itself into things like lack of happiness and lack of success, as well as pain and disease. So strong believer in the secondhand smoke is good for you. The smoke itself is good, and there's lots of proven studies based on that. And there's never been a proven study on secondhand smoke being bad for you. Right. So, as Jonathan says, smudging 
can help fix negativity, clear the energy field, and um, help you restart. Smudging is the ancient ceremony heard, in yeah. which you burn sacred plants, <laughs> such as tobacco, to allow the smoke to clean and bless a space. If you're exposed to any type of religious growing, religion growing up, you probably w witness rituals like that of smoke happening in a, in a ceremony. I'm Catholic, and it happens. Yep. In, in my religion, I don't know about you guys, but we have it in ours. Um, there are four major medical plants that are used in North America for, for medicinal cultures. plants. Yep, as such as sweet grass, sage, cedar, and tobacco. Those are the four. Tobacco is one of them. Sage is gross, though. No one likes the way that smells. And nor do I want to smoke it, right? Correct. So that's the beauty of this one. It's a it's a great one, and all of them are used frequently in ceremonies. Great on poultry, though. Yeah, sage on mm -hmm. poultry. Okay. Fantastic. Smudging is a ritual of burning tobacco. This is done to wash away the spirits and purities that are present in, in, in an individual or a space. Cigar smokers do it every time they light up, whether they know it or not. This is happening. It also cleanses away viruses in the air. It is why people work who work frequently in cigar shops get less colds and flus than those that don't. It's been years for me. Years. People that work in cigar shops get less colds and flus than people that don't work in cigar shops. I'm only basing that on three cigar shops that I know of, which is mine. But what a great study that would be, I would like to see. And I think it would win based on my little world of what it is. Because I have no stats, just what I have witnessed here. Tobacco is a gift from God used to cleanse space and all negative viruses. Lots of places you can look into in different parts of the body that it affects and acts as cigar smoking does for you. Like the brain, the smoke and aromas create a calming influence like fireplace. Right? You have a light a fireplace and it calms oh, you down a, and yeah, all that it stuff. Brings, it brings the, the energy in the room to a different level. In 1985, a new generation of behavioral science took over the National Cancer Institute and decided to channel the majority of their funding to research to stop smoking as a form of behavioral control. That's what it was all about. Mark Marcosi was part of it. Um, they chose to ignore the science for the agenda, which was to stop smoke, smoking. That's what they were put together. Imagine getting the scientists together and say, okay, our agenda here is to stop smoking. Not to let get to what the real root cause of this thing is. When they did the study agenda. on secondhand smoke, and Mark was in, in the room when they released the yep. results of the study, they said, uh, yeah, we're gonna, we know that the science says there's nothing to secondhand smoke once you're old, over the age of five years old. And they said, well, not only are we going to go with it anyway, but we're going to invent this thing called third-hand smoke, which is we are all smoking cigars, so I'm sure my vest reeks. And if I were to pick up a small child and the child gave me a hug, that I'm now infecting the child with this third-hand smoke. With, with It's not smoke. Now it's an aroma. Right. It's not smoke. The smoke is dissipated. The smoke is gone. I'm, I'm, I'm saying the smoke is good, but... It's gone. It, it, now it does an aroma. And the aroma is good for you. Aromatherapy. There we go. Maybe. Um, the National An uh, Cancer Institute chose to ignore the science that proved that smoking less than 10 cigarettes had a healthier risk profile than those that didn't smoke at all. What? That's the fact. And you can find that in the American Journal of Public Health 1989 while this was going on, because this is when this thing happened, this information is coming from the scientist himself. The same goes for cigars. Smoking up to two cigars a day, you live a longer life than if you not smoke Not only a longer life, but really a happier life. And everybody that listens to the show already gets it. You're smoking cigars because they make you happy. Yeah. Even so, my brother. My brother's dog just passed away, Dodger, and uh, we had a nice little ceremony and sent the dog off in a little handmade sarcophagus, I guess is the best way to put it. And the first thing my brother and I did was we lit up a cigar and we told stories about the dog and having the cigar going, I believe, helped his mental state, especially it's his dog. Yeah. You know, if he named his dog Chevy, he would have lived longer. What? Dodge Chevy. Just oh my God. <laughs> Stretching. But you know, the, the liquor industry did it with wine. That they, It's the same exact thing. That having a couple of glasses of wine every single day, right? Same type of thing happens to you. But they got the message out, and people believe it. You got 
lot of um, the, the health people that are drinking wine every single day, the same people that are saying how bad smoking is for you and all that, it, the, the wine industry got to them and made them understand that that's the way it is. But the smoking industry did not. These same people that are drinking the wine because they believed in what science said. Are also drinking the Kool-Aid. They are not believing into the cigar thing of it. Um, and I, th- I think that's bad marketing on the industry. Absolutely. Uh, quite the opposite happens because you have part of the industry that's against the other part of the industry, yeah. so it ends up throwing them down the, the road and saying something negative about it, like Philip Morris is doing, because they got the next project yeah. in mind. Everything's all set for the next project. Um, they can bend and twist the science and suit it to their political agendas with settled science, is what it's called, about smoking. Which there's no such thing, by the way. Science, the whole point of science is it's never settled. There we go. There's no such thing as science being settled. Uh, humans have been breathing smoke since the invention of fire two million years ago, and especially using fires in dwellings like caves, lodges, tents, teepees. Ambient smoke levels inside these kinds of dwellings have many times higher risk than any tobacco smoking. It stands to reason that um, lungs have defense against smoking inhalation. We we are actually embedded now to be able to handle smoke. Uh, And indeed, lungs have enzymes to break down and detoxify smokes and product consumption, combustion. Uh, That goes for the government uh, is plenty of smoke and mirrors that they have to combat this exact thing to happen. We have, we have two registered nurses. One is a nurse practitioner, and the other is, uh, I guess, a regular nurse. But they both said the exact same thing when I was talking to them, that being around the smoke, your lungs change how your body is able to pull the oxygen out of the air. It makes them work a little bit harder at first, but you become more efficient at pulling the oxygen out of the air, being around the smoke. It's actually good for you. And this is these are people who have medical degrees, and that is something that they know. One one guy that's been working for me now 25 years, Ed Santa Maria. Mm-hmm. Ed Santa Maria started with me 25 years ago, and he had terrible asthma. This is a, this is a true story. Mm-hmm. And he would go to the doctor for shots twice a week. And he his mother was my first employee. And <clears throat> when he started college, he got out of high school, he's going to be ready to start college. His mother said, "Do I have a job for him?" And I said, "Sure." And he's going to come to work for me. She said, but be very careful because you know he's got this asthma problem or something. And she's having him work on a cigar shop. And I said, okay. And he came to work for me and we talked for a while. And I said, okay, I'm going to show you, teach you about cigars, teach you about sales, this, this, this. And then maybe a couple days into it, I said, okay, we're going to light up a cigar. And he goes, you think I should be doing this? And I said, I think so. I think you're going to be okay. Let's see what ends up happening. And he lit the cigar, smoked the cigar. He was okay. Nothing happened. Everything's okay. He goes and gets his shots later on. He comes back the next thing. Let's have a cigar. Let's do this thing. And then I think about two weeks into it, I said, okay, now go to your doctor that you've been getting these shots for for how long? He said about seven years. Twice a week for seven years, he's injected with poison. I said, tell him, (laughs) you're never coming again. You're all set. That, you're cured. That's not. That's not. Uh, I don't think that's medically correct. David. All right. I don't think you can call it poison. Allegedly poison. Whatever. Uh, it's not a natural product. Whatever they. Whatever they're putting inside this guy. Main vein and in, into him twice a week. A kid. All these years. And by the way, seven years of no improvement. I said, you're cured. You're all set. You know, he never went back. He never went back. And I have and that a, was it. I have a similar story. I smoked my first cigar at 18, and that was the last time I had an asthma attack. Okay. Grew up with exercise-induced so, well, and cold-induced asthma. Let's test these theories of these crazy things that I'm saying. Let's not just say it's bad for you. Everybody knows that. I'm telling you some crazy stories. Let's test it. And, oh, my God, what if they find out like they did drinking a couple of glasses of wine are good for you that this is the fact? Because that's what I believe the fact is after 34 years. I believe that having a couple of cigars a day is good for you. We're going to bring on the scientist and doctor, Dr. Mark S. Marcosi, uh, who was in the room in 1985 when the health agenda changed health and politics. 
that was what happened. We've had him on. It's been a long time, but we're going to bring him back soon. And uh, he has a lot of information to share with you. You're going to hear direct from the guy that's there. He's a doctor and he's a scientist. We've been talking to him for years. Yep. And this is where a lot of this information comes from. But it also comes from my 34 years of selling cigars to people. And I feel good about it. I don't feel like my my daughter's school teacher said, oh, your father sells cigars. He's out there hurting people and all this stuff. I don't believe it. I don't believe a bit of it. I, I wouldn't do it. Yep, Joseph DeSamaris is on the Facebook uh, Live, and he's a uh, firehouse broker based out of Rhode Island. Yep. And uh, he says his asthma has improved tremendously, almost to the point of non-existence, uh, since he started smoking 10 years ago. All right. I believe so there's it. another And I've heard it from so many, so many people and stuff, but nobody's mm -hmm. willing to end up letting this information out because mm -hmm. it, it, it goes up against what they're trying to accomplish. Um, and that's it. So remember, tickets available for Two Guys Cigars, uh, Two Guys Anniversary, uh, 34th Anniversary Party. If you want tickets, they're 225 They're for our Cigar Authority listeners, call 603-898-2221. It's not going to last long. I just put about 20 or so tickets aside so that we would be able to offer this and uh, have, have you guys come up, maybe uh, spend a few days, come to, come to that, and then come see the show live. We're going to take a break right now. When we come back, um, I have the wrong information here on here, but we're going to actually smoke a cigar from Cigar Journal's blind taste test that they have us do. We've smoked all our cigars that we had to get ready for, but we saved one so we could do it right in front of you. Um, so we're live in the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. You're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Stepping into the aging room has a new meaning at Aging Room Cigars, as Rafael Nodal has traveled to Spain, where the idea for Aging Room Solera was born. The Solera method of aging has been used for centuries in the making of wine, sherry, brandy, and rum. The method mixes different vintages, allowing them to age together. For Aging Room Solera, Rafael takes several tobacco vintages and puts them in bales, where they age together for another 12 to 18 months. This allows the tobaccos to marry for a longer period of time. At the end of the aging process, Aging Room Solera becomes a balanced and complex cigar with a fantastic price point. Aging Room Solera, it will have you calling for an encore. In a time where humidors are overflowing and retailers' shelves are on the verge of buckling, there is one brand that stands out amongst the rest. Sereno Cigar Company offers four distinct blends. The Connecticut, the Medio, Maduro, and Maduro XX, all aged to perfection. Crafted at the La Corona Cigar Factory in Esteli, Nicaragua, each artfully crafted blend comes to life by the experienced hands of master blender Omar Gonzalez Aleman and industry veteran Anthony Sereno. To create this masterpiece, a combination of hand-selected filler tobaccos from the fertile soils of Esteli and Jalapa are aged for over five years and then draped with a luxurious wrapper leaf to bring you an endlessly complex and majestic experience. A post-roll aging process of two additional years allows the blend to marry, creating unmistakable and ever-changing tasting notes that tantalize the palate, leaving you anticipating each and every drop. Visit SerenoCigars.com for a list of retailers, and you can always find Sereno Cigars available online at twoguyscigars.com. Sereno, a majestic cigar aged to perfection. You've heard us talking before about the best cigar magazine in the world, Cigar Journal. You want to know what makes Cigar Journal the best cigar magazine? Cigar Journal covers every angle of the cigar world. From exclusive stories and features, insightful interviews with industry power players, detailed cigar reviews, and of course, all the latest news and reports surrounding premium cigars. We're telling you, you will be impressed. Cigar Journal has stunning images, explanations of Cigar Science Basics, this is the magazine for any cigar enthusiast, or better yet, passionado. Cigar Journal covers cigars in the U.S. and around the world and is printed right here in the USA. You owe it to yourself to discover the world's best cigar magazine, Cigar Journal. Available at your local cigar retailer and on the web at their new website, CigarJournal.com. That's cigarjournal.com.
Com. You're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Let me tell you a little bit about the Rocky Patel 15th Anniversary Cigar, or what they call the Three-Peat. Crafted in Rocky's boutique Nicaraguan factory, the 15th anniversary was released in 2010 to commemorate Rocky Patel's 15th year in the cigar industry, and it impressed right out of the gate. The Robusto and the Torpedo both scored 93 points in Cigar Aficionado, while the Toro and Corona Gorda both notched 92 points. The Rocky Patel 15th Anniversary is a robust cigar with notes of toasted spice, roasted coffee, and almonds. Rocky Patel himself has referred to his 15th Anniversary as the Decade on Steroids. The 15th anniversary has also been named to Cigar Aficionado's Top 25 Cigars of the Year list on three separate occasions. Rocky's only brand to accomplish the three-peat. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. The La Galera Habano uses a classic wrapper on a staple cigar for a classy company. Hi there, this is David Garofalo of the Cigar Authority, and I want, no, no, I need to tell you about La Galera Habano. The La Galera Habano is an authentic cigar elaborated with the hands of the best cigar rollers of Tabacalera Palma in the Dominican Republic. Blended around an outstanding, flavorful Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, the Dominican-grown Corojo binder, and the filler made up of Peloto Cubano, Criollo 98, and Peloto de Oro, creating a medium to full-bodied, attractively consistent, and aromatic smoke that envies no other. I love this cigar. Have you tried La Galera Habano yet? Well, what are you waiting for? Available at Better Cigar Shops worldwide is La Galera Habano. The wait is over. La Galera Habano. Justo and his father Julio Eiroa are continuing the tradition of growing authentic Corojo and now bring you Aladino. Aladino is a true old-fashioned cigar, pure authentic Corojo grown in the Eiroa tobacco farms in Honduras from the original Cuban seed of Corojo. An Aladino cigar represents the golden era of cigars in Cuba, and after one light, this old-school smoke will bring you back. Aladino cigars come from JRE Tobacco, a family center company who manage all aspects of cigar growing and manufacturing. This crop to shop operation is fully committed to providing you with quality and satisfaction. The premier Corojo grower in the entire cigar industry is Julio Eiroa, a tobacco grower and master cigar blender who personally guarantees that Aladino will provide you the opportunity to enjoy the true authentic Corojo taste. Take this journey and be part of history in a cigar smoking experience like no other. Aladino. This is Nelson Afronso from Selected Tobacco, the company who made and manufactured Atabe, Byron, and Bandolero. You are listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And we'll have Nelson Alfonso on the show next week. He's going to join us, and part of the Sky Authority Care Package next week is Bandolero, and we'll smoke it along with him. And I got some big news about the Care Package, and we'll get to that in just a little while. But we're back, and we're going to do a little uh, bit of homework. Um, you know, we are all on the blind taste test for Cigar Journal, where they send us cigars each, each month, each, every other month. Uh, when they feel like it. When they feel like it. It's almost quarterly. Yeah? Okay. Um, and we're supposed to smoke and rate all these cigars, so we're going to do it, and I'm going to... I still got half of the La Giana, uh here. I'll get to that later. But uh, let's show you what we do and uh, how it works. We have a little form here, and it's called a review form, and it asks for our name and the date that we're... Um, doing this so today is uh 511 may, may 11 511 and the cigar number that we do so the cigar show me a cigar jonathan is number 2332 and it's an odd shaped little thing we've all smoked all our cigars we saved one and this was so odd looking we have no idea what it is so we thought this would be a good one because we have no idea what it is um 2332 
So we put that down there, and then it asks you for particular attributes to, to avoid mistaken. So you would call this, this because it's shaped like this, is definitely a figurato. Yeah, I, I, any shaped cigar is a figurato. I labeled it as the pre-cut figurato because it it's, doesn't appear it needs to be cut. I labeled it as a double perfecto. But it, it's really for our sake so that we don't put the wrong one uh, as people are doing. Well, and there's times when the person that writes out the band has their handwriting a little wobbly, so you yeah. can't really tell what the number is. You get it the best you can, and yeah. that, that helps them figure out which one it was. Okay, so let, let me look at your cigar, Jonathan. Um, yours actually looks, your, your little end there looks different. Than, let me see yours, Barry. I just trimmed mine a little bit, uh, but it wasn't as... It wasn't as uh, Maybe my band's on upside down? Is that what you're saying? Dominant is... Uh, yeah, yeah, I think your band is on upside down. Did you take it off? No. no your, band, your band is legitimately on upside down. All right, I'll switch it. Slide this off. Compared to ours. I'd like to compare it with Ed Sullivan's also. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's getting an incomplete for not showing up with their homework. My homework is at home. Ah, now, your dog ate it, right? No, the good news is he didn't eat okay. it, so I will be finishing it later on. All right. So do not let this affect and all he is, don't you, let affect what each other says to you. And that's why we do it separately and, and all with each other, because it's going to affect um, what people, you know, you don't want to sway no. anybody. So try, try to keep that away. Usually we'll say to each other, did you smoke it yet? If the person hasn't, then now we I do. don't share my opinion yeah. with them until we both smoked yeah. it. Yeah, we got to be as true and fair to whoever made the cigar. This is somebody's child. Somebody really cares about it. So, we, we, you know, it's, it's about constructive criticism. If, if we're criticizing and, it, and it's about what do we like about the cigar. Uh, but it also requires a rating. And I, I never do that. Barry's a regular at doing, doing ratings and stuff. But that requires that also. But some of these things require some information before we even light it. So the first thing it's asking for is wrapper. It wants to know if it's chunky veins or tiny veins. Which you, for chunky veins, you'd think maybe uh, Connecticut Broadleaf would be an example of yep. a chunky vein. And this is kind of a it, Habano, and I'm, I'm going to say it's in the middle of the road as far as its vein structure. Yep. So middle of the road here has, has five little slots. So And we can go in the middle of the slots, too, if we needed to. That's right. So, so really, it's but, a, it's a but, score of 10. But I'd agree with you where this is right in the middle of both. So I would say it's right on number three. There is no numbers on it, but I'd say yeah, it's in the middle, right? I, I concur. I, I, and then three. the next thing is sandy versus silky or oily. And for me, that's about the sheen that you see on the wrapper. Yeah, even, even feeling it, right? If you, yeah. If, if it's nice and smooth, it's going to go more toward the silky and oily. And if it's on the dull side, it'll be toward the sandy. So I'm a little what? I'm saying it's a little on the silky, oily side. Not much. So three and a half. I went up to four. Okay. Yeah, I went to four. I'm going to three and a half because I'm not quite there with you. And then the color, very light or almost black? For me, it's middle of the road. It's kind of in the middle. It's a Habano shade. Yeah. For me, it's a 0.5 past the middle of the road. I went between three and four. Okay. Because it's a little bit more. It's a little bit it's more, a little more than, darker. Yeah. Yep. I'm going to agree. I'm going to go right there too. And then we got construction, soft or firm or anything in between. And uh, for me, I always feel for uh, oh, dead spots, spots or voids, and I don't feel any. All right. I so have, I give it a perfect score for firmness. As, and and as especially, and which is very good when it comes to a cigar shaped this dramatic difference yep. that the point is, it's not going to be too much in one point. Yep. Or the whole body. You'll see this when you go into a cigar factory and the people are walking around testing the cigars, squeezing the cigars and holding them up, and they go all the way down to make sure there's not any. Uh, and if you're doing this at home and you're feeling for dead spots, you don't want to squeeze to the point of breaking the wrapper. You, you got to be kind of careful. You got to have delicate hands for this. So soft to firm. I'm going towards firm. Yep. I'm not going to go all the way to six, but I'm going to go to five. And it's. Uh it's pretty even all the way through. There's yep. no dead spots. Yeah, so. even or uneven, and it's very even. Uh, and I'm going to go all the way to five on totally even because I'm pretty amazed at a cigar like this. But it, it's so packed and even 
I'm going to worry about the draw. <clears throat> so now it's asking about the draw, but it's not. This is before you even light it. It's asking about the draw. So do, and that Barry, gives you a chance to do Barry the cold cut draw. his a little. I, it's like I want to cut it, but I'm going to taste. I'm going to draw first. Yeah, because this was the pre-cut, as we alluded to. Yeah. If you want to call it, I'm cutting the cigar because it, it's way too narrow. See, so yeah, I'm not. I'm not doctoring mine in any way. This is how it came. But who <laughs> said it was pre-cut? Look. It's pre-cut. Well, All of ours. Pre-cut. I'm cutting mine. I cut mine as well. And normally, I would even cut the, the, the nipple off the, very, the other end. If it was a it cigar better. I purchased yeah. in the store, that's the way I would go about doing it. Uh, but out of fairness for the review, I'm leaving it as is. So now I want to know the draw is poor to perfect and the flaws that it would have. And I'm not going to – I'm going to skip it right now because yep. I want to light it up for us because my draw is tight. Before you light it up, you want to pay attention to that cold draw. Yes. Uh, I'm getting dehydrated apricots and a muted floral component. It's wow, you don't even have it in your hand, Mr. Left My Homework oh, at Home. That, that was a mistake, sorry. Yeah, because he actually has a bag of dried apricots, <laughs> and that's what he was – tasting and for me there's a little bit of lemon to it and a little grassiness yeah maybe i could give you some citrus like, but you think it's lemongrass with lemon and grassiness two separate components all right and we are completely all three of us completely away from each other because i have maple syrup light maple syrup yeah can i write on your paper that that's wrong <laughs> light maple syrup Syrup, S U R P E, S Y R U P. You're asking Barry. I know. <laughs> uh, he happens Why don't to be you do correct like a in this case. normal person and just Google it. Hey, let's not forget the spelling bee with Skip Martin. I only had one mistake. Here we go. We're going to light our cigar today with the Vertigo Cyclone Two, featuring, as David alluded to prior. It has double wall protection on the flame. It's got three jets, a flip top, an easy adjustment wheel, and the patented Vertigo big-ass tank, all for the low price of $14.99. That is the Vertigo Cyclone 2. And I'm glad I didn't give it, a, give it a bad rating for the draw because it seemed like it was very tough. I lit it up, and it's improved. This so is probably not great yet, but I'm not gonna. This make is that probably easy. the only time where I wouldn't feel comfortable giving a cigar a rating on the draw because of its shape. Yeah, it so, wouldn't be fair. Uh, it's gonna when, when, when it goes over the bulb, it's gonna make a determination at that point for me that I'm gonna actually make the call. I like to refer to this part as the nipple. Mm. Once you get past the nipple. Okay, so <laughs> you guys ever have uh, angel food cake, but but you take the angel food cake out of the thing. Maybe you didn't flour it properly, and there's a little angel food cake stuck to the pan, and it's got a little caramelization happening to it. It's not burnt, but it's, it's stuck the, in there, yeah. and you get the spatula, and you chisel it off, and you eat that. I'm getting a little toasted angel food cake. Not at all. No. <laughs> Crickets. Mm. <laughs> no. See, I'm st still on the kind of tight draw, so... They have to get your tasty notes and go, this must be Jonathan's. Yeah, only three... Throw it in the garbage. Only three or four times, and I go back and I look at the reviews after when they were in the magazine, only three or four times is anything remotely close to what I put made into the magazine. So I believe it's 20 to 25 people yep. are on the tasting thing for each individual cigar that, that, that is brought there and i promise you it's a lot of years i've been doing this for them it's honest mm -hmm. we don't know what it is and they take what we we do and even because there's four of us and barry you did this for a while mm -hmm. that you ended up keeping track of the numbers mm -hmm. just to see what did we average out and then when the number comes out good or bad of whatever it ends up coming it's never been more than one or two different oh, yeah. high or low ever uh most of the time it's off pretty, of our pretty, average yeah. yep most of the time, it's pretty spot on to what it is. So it's it's real. I promise you that. that that's what it is. I mean, there are some cigars we've gotten in the past that have such a distinct shape that you can't help but wonder if it's such and such cigar. Yeah. You know, you get you get a flying pig from uh, Drew Estate complete with the the pigtail top on it. Yeah. Right. And it's like a four by 60. 
you know that's what it is. Yeah, unless, so, unless somebody's ripping off the brand, and, and we've seen that, that somebody makes the same exact type of look, look Cri- to it. Kristoff's are pretty distinctive, too. Not just the tight pigtail, but yeah. then their unfinished foot. Yeah, right? yeah. And the wrappers on those have a particular look to them. Yeah, yeah. All right, so some things, as we're going to smoke the cigars, we got to think about now. Uh, aromas and taste. And that is coming up on um, the first third that we'll end up putting that information. We have a second third, a third third, and a rating. Also coming up, we're going to finish up on the draw, and then it's the combustion. Razor sharp or uneven, hasty or slow, extinguishes or burns steadies, and any flaws. When we get to smoke, it's going to be little or voluminous. Voluminous. Vol- voluminous. Hot or cool. Coming, having to do with the smoke itself. On the ash, is it flaky or firm and stable? Is the ash dark or white and everything in between? Complexity, one-dimensional to multi-layered. Harmony, little to much. The body of it, elusive or full? Elusive must mean mild to full, I guess. Mm-hmm. Well, then you have boldness and power. We're mild, mild and to bold. bold. Yeah. And then we have the finish, short to long finish. And then when we get to the end of it, it's going to be the rating system. And the rating system is a 86 to 87 is good. 89 to 90 is very good. 92 to 94 is excellent. And a class by itself is 97 to 100. And um, I've done that maybe once or twice in all these years, gave anything in, in, into that um, so we'll get to more of that as we're smoking along but right now it's time to find find out what's up in the cigar world with Barry Stein it's time for what's, what's up? up in the cigar world brought to you by Recluse Cigars you want to know what's up Recluse Cigars is what's up voted the 2015 cigar of the year is the Recluse Amadeus Reserva Habano Every Recluse cigar goes through eight, count them, eight fermentation cycles over the course of two full years. They are box-pressed and rolled end to bar for a perfect draw every time. If you haven't done it yet, be sure to try a Recluse cigar today. And you can add Arkansas to the list of states that has passed the Tobacco 21 bill. Their new law goes into effect September 1st, 2019. A few weeks ago, we reported that Maryland passed their law. The governor has announced that he will be signing that on Monday. The state of Illinois, which recently passed the Tobacco 21 law, is now looking to increase taxes on cigars from 36% to 64%. Didn't see that coming. And 90210, also known as Beverly Hills, California, Mm. is looking to completely ban all tobacco sales within city limits. However, there is a measure that would provide an exemption for cigar shops. Something for military, too, wasn't there? Uh, not on the ban of no. sales. On, uh, some of the Tobacco so 21 he- laws have exemptions for uh, military yeah. members. So back to the agenda that we're talking about, a cigar is good for you, and their agenda is we just don't want it, you to do it, period. That's it. Yep. We have no reason for it or anything, but we just don't want you to do it. We know you like it, but we don't care. But we're into mushrooms right now. We, we're thinking of legalizing hallucinogenic mushrooms. Can you, can you save that for the after show? Right. Is that possible? All right. Can you just calm down? All right. I'm, I'm getting ready, <laughs> to, a whole, ready to go, baby. We had a whole game plan so planned much, out So here. much of this for relaxing me, but it does relax me, but it, it, it's imagine, Barry. Imagine what a fucking lunatic he'd be if he wasn't smoking. Mm. Go ahead. That's it. That's it. That's what's up in the cigar world. All right. So uh, next week, uh, as I said earlier, uh, select, selecting the perfect tobacco for cigars. Nelson Alfonso from Selected Tobacco is going to be joining us right here live. Uh, he's the owner of Atabe Byron and Bandolero, and his company is called Selected Tobacco. Uh, there's a reason for it. He selects all the leaves and all the things, and we're going to get into that. So uh, it's going to great to have him here. Uh, can't w- uh, wait to have him. Um, and on the following week, it's going to be cigars, cigar bars, and, and cigar, cigar bars, candy bars and cigars. We did this show how many years ago? <laughs> five. Uh, more. At least, at least more. Five. It was a long time ago. Are you going to have a palate cleanser? Which we use uh, Lay's potato chips <laughs> to cleanse the palate. <laughs> and we're, we're pairing candy bars with cigars. But I'm, I'm guessing we're going to be, and that was the idea of it. Ed and I are leaving next Monday 
to the Convectionary Candy and Snack Expo in Chicago. <laughs> Any of our um, friends out there that are in the Chicago area will be going to cigar shops each night for sure. Um, but um, that was the funniest show because... We really did. We really did it. And uh, the, who came in? The guy from uh, The Sopranos. Oh, Joe Ganiscoli. Yes. He ended up. He was driving around and listening to the show. And uh, that was back when it was on the radio. Maybe yes. seven years ago. With this, got to be. And uh, he comes in and says, "I got to stop this madness. It's ridiculous. <laughs> what are you doing?" But it was it was f- laugh it, out loud. It was funny. fun. Man, did I have a headache afterwards <laughs> from all that sugar. Whew. Yeah. That was brutal. So me and Ed are going to a convention. What are we going to be like? Oh, my God. But anyway, looking forward to that uh, coming up. Um, all right. So my draw stinks. And it is a not totally nothing. So it's not going to be the worst one. But it's in between the worst and the second worst. That's how tight my draw is. Yeah, mine's tight, too. And it's affecting smoke production. Which is going to be a, a poor score there. Yeah. Uh, David writes, by the way, through the Contact Us page. Uh, the email just came in. Whoa. Hello, Mr. Jonathan. I can't thank my luck more than the fact that I'm an audio listener to the show when you went off the rails a couple of weeks ago. I'm still debating if I should watch the video. You're a good sport, which makes the show great. I'm going camping with my family next weekend and planning on attending the show while I'm there. Good. Could you remind me which location is the studio in? And what time the show starts, I'll be dropping my wife and son off for an afternoon of shopping. So it'll be interesting to see who spends more money. Looking forward to meeting both you, Barry, and Dave next week. Cheers, David. Uh, The show is taped at the Salem location, 304 South Broadway in Salem, New Hampshire. And we kick things off at noontime sharp. And right behind us, or either one mile down on the same road, or you can take the back road that goes right around to the back of the mall. It's called the Rockingham Mall. You drop them off for a couple hours, and you join us. So you stay a little longer even after that, because we do the after show Yeah, immediately following. So if, if you've not had enough and run away, you can stick around for that. Back on the reviews here, now that we're... Uh, do you usually move as you do this? All, all the way down and as you I'm, jump. As I'm able to uh, as I'm able to fill something out, I fill it out. Yep. Um, okay, so this one's a little different because if it was a Toro, you would know what your smoke production is right as soon as you light it. Mm. That just doesn't change. This I figured would change being a Figurado. It hasn't. All right. Combustion, uneven or razor sharp. So we're looking at the mascara line, the the little uh, line, combustion line that, that's on the cigar. Um, I've had to touch mine up three times already. I've I've hit it a couple times. It's uneven. Uh, you, you're running that risk with a figure out to be <clears> yes. Figurados almost never burn yep. perfect. Uh, but that being said, we we got to say for cigar for cigar, I got to be as honest as I can mm. over here. And uh, I'm uneven. I'm not going to give it the worst, but I'll give it the second worst. It's not in between. It's a mm. little wor- worse than what I would want it to be. <clears throat> um. Hasty or slow? How, how's it burning? I think it's burning really slow. Mine's burning really slow because I can't get. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. Yeah. yeah. So it's. I don't know if that's a good rating or a bad rating, but I'm giving it a slow. Yeah. And as far as extinguishing, it went out two times early on that I had to get in there and relight. And mine has not gone out, uh, but I agree with the other stuff. And this is actually a cigar um, that I would tap out. Because mine just mine blew up in so yeah, many yeah. Mine's places. got a little. It's got a couple of fissures that so, look like they're going to pop. So the great news is we're not going to beat beat up a brand because we have no idea what it is. Yeah. The only one that knows this is Cigar Journal themselves. We yeah. don't even know ourselves. It's um, and and in case they are listening, um, two three three two. If, <laughs> if, if you are one of the tasters for Cigar Journal, please do it your way and pay no attention to what we're saying because we don't want to uh, sway you in any way. But his three for three that are not performing well and it is what it is you know um you you run the risk when you ask or you send your cigars in for review Mm. our job is to do the most honest thing we can do we have no idea if this is one of the cigar manufacturers we love or this is one we don't love uh, or anything in between i like them all anyway but 
I'm just giving my honest opinion of whatever it is. All I can do. That's what I can't even do the rapid trick to save it because mine just it's split in like seven different directions. You got a tight draw too? No, no. I definitely don't have that. So maybe this is holding together because it's so tight. Just as a note, it's not a storage or humidity problem. They do. Yeah. They're all the same. They come in the same bag, humidified the same. Yeah. They do a great job shipping them to yeah. us, so they arrive in great condition. So we're all at least past the first third. So what do you have for taste on your first third? What have you written? I got uh, toasted angel food cake and uh, <laughs> went with some that, huh? citrus notes. So it's like lemon angel food cake? So I went with earth, citrus, and a hint of vanilla. All right, so the citrus is positive. So you're saying the same shit that I'm saying. I'm just not making it sound awesome. Limp. limp. What about the poor guy that has to write these up? I'm not making it sound limp. I'm giving him an opportunity to use something that people are going to say, hmm, that sounds delicious. After a few few years, you see that he's not using it. You're not going to change it up, right? You're going to keep going with it until... I can't win with you. Okay, I'm asking if I, if a I question. You know, no, because because when I when I make a recipe and I'm like, oh, I think I can improve upon this. You bitch that I changed it and now I'm not changing something, and you're bitching I'm not changing I'm, it. There's just, no winning. I'm I got news just, for you. If I picked up Cigar Journal and I saw a review for one of their cigars, it tastes like the stuff stuck to the bottom of a pan of angel. <laughs> I food didn't write that. <laughs> that is that is scratched off. I go. I'm not putting any stock in their reviews. Thankfully, they don't use it. And. Dave, I may have to start writing reviews for the Cigar Authority now. As a snack authority, isn't Angel Food Cake a disappointment? It is for me. It's not. It's not, not enough thing. cake to it. It's too. See, sloppy this and light. is where you're missing the the boat on Angel Food Cake. I need a whole Angel. Food That's cake. correct. <laughs> yeah, you get a whole you. cake out of the deal. Yeah. Okay. All right. I have uh, bitter and rind. The citrus rind. Mm-hmm. That's where the bitterness comes into the it, not pith. the citrus. Pith? Pith? Piss. I think he said piss. I thought he said piss, how do you spell, How do you spell it? P-I-T-H. Pith. So he's going to know I can spell he it. He actually says piss, but he has a speech impediment. All right. Um, <laughs> the, the smoke volume. I have little. Yeah, it's on, the, it's on the very, very low end. See, mine is volume. It's smoking on its own. I mean, it could well, be smoking through rat- the cracks. Right. Yeah. So I would go to the north side of medium on mine. Okay. Uh, and how about hot or cool? Uh, even it's, with, kinda, it's kind of on the hot side. Yeah, even with the split, mine's warm. So I'd go middle of the road. I'm going more toward hot. As far as the ash goes. I'm going to go right in the middle on it because I'm not getting enough smoke to get it hot. You, you think it's that burnt? burning up because i'm i'm gonna say the uh the ash is on the stable to firm side not all the way full pull there's a little flake to it but yeah, i would go four on the yeah five. i'm giving it four out of five there i agree and as far as how dark the ash is it's on the darker side of the middle of the road there not mine yeah not mine looking at yours not yours either what that's no, that's not that's pretty dark. white that's gray uh, i think it's dark I think yours is whiter. Mine uh, is whiter. You put that next to a Cuban ash. A Cuban ash is dark. Right. I'm not changing my answer. Yeah, I'm going uh, <laughs> going ne- with it anyway. There ne- might be an open slot white. in Cigar General Tastings once Ryan holds these. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> We're all smoking the same thing, and it's an interesting. We're coming up with uh, with different uh, different thoughts here. But uh, this is uh, Cigar Journal number. Two three three two, and we're going to keep smoking it along during the break. Right now, we will take a break. When we come back, the care package is about to make some changes and about to open up again. We're live in the Studio Twenty One Podcast Cafe, and you're listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Let's talk a little about Rough Rider cigars. So here is where the motorcycle culture meets Cigar Nation. This badass looking cigar uses the name Rough, but delivers a smooth as silk ride each and every time. Even before lighting one, you can't help but notice it's sweet like honey flavor. Smooth and creamy, resembling slightly sweetened butter. Outstanding! The Rough Rider Cigar is so beautiful in so many ways. We're talking a premium cigar, imported, long filler cigar, but wait till you hear the price. 
every cigar is in the $3 price range. That's right. Even the Churchill in the 6x60, every cigar is in the $3 price range. Rough Rider Cigars. So there's nothing rough about Rough Rider except the name. Rough Rider Cigars. The following message is brought to you by Drew Estate. Drew Estate, the rebirth of cigars in the new Drew Diplomat app. Join me, Barry Stein, from the Cigar Authority on Drew Diplomat. As you know, I am quite partial to Liga Pavada number 9 from Drew Estate. So join me for a Liga and share your experience with Drew Estate. And while you're at it, don't forget to check into Two Guys Smoke Shop on the Drew Diplomat app. Drew Diplomat is now available for the iPhone and Android. To learn more about Drew Diplomat, visit DrewDiplomat.com. That's DrewDiplomat.com. You must be at least 21 years of age or older and a resident of the United States, including D.C. To be eligible for membership in this program, other terms and conditions apply. Surgeon General warning, cigars are not a safe alternative to cigarettes. Since 1903, when La Aurora Cigars first opened their doors as the first cigar factory of the Dominican Republic, they have defined Dominican cigar manufacturing. Now, La Aurora continues that innovation with La Aurora Dominican DNA, featuring an exceptional blend whose soul is the Andullo. La Aurora pays tribute to the oldest Dominican tobacco process with a cigar that features tobacco that is part of their heritage and their DNA. The La Aurora DNA features this hard-to-work tobacco that brings the unique characteristics of strength, inspiring aroma, and sweetness that creates an exceptional smoking experience that only La Aurora can bring you. Experience La Aurora Dominican DNA with its Cibao Valley Dominican wrapper, an authentic Cameron binder from Africa with fillers from the Dominican Republic, Pennsylvania, Nicaragua, and Andullo. Available at top retailers like twoguyscigars.com and is distributed in the United States by Miami Cigar and Company. It's time to light that cigar and stay tuned. Ooh. The Cigar Authority will be right back on the United Podcast Network. Jose Dominguez, Jose Dominguez, Jose, Jose, Jose Dominguez. What the hell are you doing? I'm writing a commercial for Jose Dominguez. Well, what you should be doing is talking about how good they are. That Jose Dominguez makes millions of cigars for other people, but saves the best tobaccos and the best blend for his namesake. Jose Dominguez, not singing a song, if that's what you think you're doing. What I am doing is creating what is known as a donut. Hey, nobody's going to take away your donut. No, a donut in a commercial is when it starts with a jingle and then the information comes in and then ends with the song again. The information is the filling of the donut. Why does everything you talk about have to center around food and usually donuts? I don't know. Listen, Jose Dominguez cigars come in four great sizes and two wrappers. The mild, buttery, smooth, natural, and the slightly bolder Maduro. And every cigar is about $5. You know as well as I do, Dave, Jose Dominguez is no $5 cigar. It's worth so much more, it's a sensational value. Okay, here's the end of the donut. You ready? Jose Dominguez. Jose Dominguez. Legendary brand opens a new chapter in its storied history with the H. Upman by A.J. Fernandez. The nearly 175-year-old H. Upman brand in collaboration with storied cigar maker A.J. Fernandez bring a medium to full-bodied, sweetly balanced, and yet complex smoking experience. Boasting an Ecuador Sumatra wrapper, this cigar produces incredible aromas and nuances of sweet spices. Today, almost 175 years later, the legacy of H. Upman lives on a brand new take on an age-old brand. Handcrafted in Esteli, Nicaragua by Cigar Master A.J. Fernandez. Available in four sizes, priced under $9. A legendary brand opens a new chapter in its storied history with the H. Upman by A.J. Fernandez. Hi, this is Nestor Miranda from Miami Cigar, and you are listening to The Cigar Authority. 
Okay, we're back. We're smoking blind for Cigar Journal Magazine, number 2332. Doesn't mean anything to any of us, but just so we keep track of the cigar we're smoking. Reminder, the after show recorded immediately following the show. The after show is a podcast only, so be sure to subscribe to the Cigar Authority on your favorite podcast catcher. You get the shows automatically on Wednesday, and it'll be uh, a little bit after this show. This week, we may have a new substantial equivalency suggestion for the cigar industry. You'll want to tune in. Yeah? All right. Uh, and the YouTube subscribers, we got a special treat for you coming out soon. So if you're just a podcast listener, I'm taking my clothes to... off again. Oh yeah, see that that dropped the uh, the viewership major big time. But uh, we, we, we're uh, we're smoking the cigar. It's going slow. I haven't even taken the ash off it, so the the burn is very very slow. Maybe a good thing, maybe a bad thing. When it's a cigar that you're not particularly liking, it's burning slow. It's nice if it's a you you find that that cigars that you love burn too fast it's over too soon 100 yeah, yeah. percent. just like sleeping with that hot girl in high school it's over way too fast yeah there we go so i i had somebody write in and i uh had a foot in mouth incident this week yeah uh, mr hernandez wrote in via the contact us page and uh he has a question for us howdy from texas as a young man i often find myself thinking about two things a good woman and a good cigar my issue is most women my age are not fond of the musk of premium cigars. So here's my hypothetical question for you. You're about to leave for a five-day vacation with your woman, no children. And you've convinced her to let you bring five cigars in a travel humidor. You cannot buy more cigars when you get where you're going. What five cigars are you going to bring? And this is, I, do, I usually respond to make sure that people's emails are correct. And Mr. Hernandez has written in before. And so my wise-ass comment back was, Ditch the bitch and go. get a hooker that <laughs> yeah. you pay to leave. Well, it turns out that he's a minister. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, replied back that he would uh, he would uh, take a poll in his congregation and he'll to see if and uh, he'll pray for you. <laughs> pray for my pray soul. For, yes. Uh, so my answer would be I would I would certainly bring my favorite cigar, the Byron uh, Grand Poema. But I've also been smoking a lot of the Corojo Reserve, so I'd bring a Toro and a Robusto, the Garofalo Sun Grown Toro, which is in my regular rotation, and a United Box Press Natural, because that's a cigar I like to travel with. I, I would have such a problem with that of now you can only get five. And maybe I would only smoke five if I, if I was there, but now you told me I can only smoke five, and now I need more than five. And, and it's because of the aroma. You go outside and you smoke the cigar, and what kind of aroma? Use some mouthwash you after if, you, if you're doing in. kissing or something. I don't know. If you're doing kissing? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I would bring, uh, I would bring something like a uh, like a Java mint or something. Or no, you Java would cherry. not. Shut <laughs> just, to, just to entice her for the first cigar. And then, you know, maybe she's going to want to try it. And then I would go with milder cigars because they tend not to be overpowered. The amount of bullshit that you spew and sometimes. Barry. Yes. If she's only letting me bring five i'm not trying to entice her to take one of my five you know what if you can entice her on a vacation it'll become less of a challenge during everyday life so this is this is wife wife just a girl girl he's dating I, I, yeah i go with huh? you i go with your first response <laughs> <laughs> hey i got my wife smoking the, the girl by you're dating bring, by having is, a job is limiting you to five cigars while you go on vacation mm -hmm. it's over you limiting her to one glass of wine every day? I don't know. Do you have a problem with wine? I, no, but I have a problem with her limiting. We're on, going on vacation. You only get five glasses of wine or five drinks. You can have if one drink you, per cigar. Whatever she's into, she can only have a limited amount of that. So let's start this relationship with See, we're, we're going to both uh, control what the other person is no, going to do. That's the difference between men and women. Men, we accept the women for who they are. Right now, this is it. And they are constantly trying to change, change us, us, which is why so many of us broken men end up in marriages and it ends in divorce because they can't change us. I'm smoking my cigars. Second, third, what do you think of the cigar? Uh, I'm getting a little lemon zest, some toasted wheat, and a floral component is starting to develop in the back end. For me, it's uh, very earthy. <clears throat> extremely dry on the palate and subtle citrus. The floral component, by the way, have you guys ever smelled 
Jovan Musk for men? I don't dance with men, so no. It's a very old school, like English leather type of cologne. Okay. And that's that, it's a very... Is that the cologne that you prefer your dancing partners to wear? I don't oppose them wearing any cologne. <laughs> they can wear whatever they want. Speaking of cologne... I don't try a, to restrict people's fun. You know, people, they're, they're trying to start outlawing cologne now, too. That's another thing this government is trying to do, especially on, on airlines, getting on a plane and you have some cologne or uh, aftershave on, and they're not not going to want you to even go on there. I mean, it's getting crazy. So that's what I always say when, when I'm fighting over some legislation about cigars. Whatever you like is the next thing they're going to go after. You know, so you gotta you got to be careful of that. I know maybe you don't like smoking or, or smokers. I said this at the last hearing at the um, Nashua trying to go to 21. I said, you hate cigar smokers. You hate cigar um, people that, that smoke. You hate the smell of it. You hate everything about it. Hate. Very strong word, but that's what you do. And you want to do everything you, you, you can do to end up doing it because you hate this minority of people that are smokers. But whatever you are into, if you, if you love nice cologne or something, they're going to go after you someday for that or for whatever it's going to be. So, so is that the next thing then for flying? First you get gate raped by the TSA. Yes. Then you go into a decontamination chamber and get deloused like a prisoner. And what's more filthy than the plane itself? Really? You should allow somebody to go in there before you get on there and smoke and get that smudging thing going on and get clean up some of that bacteria that's happening inside there. I do have this dryness to it, but this is going to become a one-dimensional type cigar for me because yes. I got that bit of rind, uh, and I'm going to write it again bit of rind citrus component is basically all I'm getting from this. Yeah, and the dimension aspect of it right now, I'm leaning toward 1.5, mm. just because there is earth and citrus. If it was just strictly earth for me, yeah. then it, that would get it away. Well, that's something I don't put down until the very end. Everything I have left, which is complexity, harmony, body, power, and finish, I save for the very end. Because right, I, but I keep a running tab in my yeah. mind as I go. All right, this is probably what I'm doing at this point. Let's see if it changes. So I'm disappointed because I we, we picked a cigar I thought was going to be something good, and we would be talking so nice things. On earth and lemon, it's say you went to Whole Foods and you bought an organic lemon, and you were bringing it into your house and dropped it in the mud, and then you tasted it. Is that what you're getting, Barry? Wow, that's so Mr. Jonathan-esque. Yeah. <laughs> I don't get why, why you guys think that just by be making up some dumb story that you're even remotely similar to me. <laughs> right now, it's time to take a peek into the asylum from our friends at Asylum Cigars. They're coming to take me away, ha-ha. They're coming <coughs> to take me away, ho-ho, hee-hee, ha-ha. To the funny farm where life is beautiful all the time. And I'll be happy to see those nice young men in their clean white coats. And they're coming to take me away. It's time for news from the Insane Asylum. Odd and sometimes historic news stories that are too insane to be true, or are they? Brought to you by Asylum Cigars. Take no prisoners. Asylum Cigars are truly flavorful, medium-bodied Nicaraguan cigars with sizes ranging from 4x44 to the absolutely insane 8x80 Asylum Cigars. I got the munchies because I got high. I decided to rob the Dairy Queen because I got high. I wanted more ice cream and decided to rob the Dairy Queen again because I got high, because I got high. A Colorado man caused a glitch in the Matrix and a sense of deja vu when he robbed the same Dairy Queen location two hours apart, as well as trying to carjack a person from the drive through lane each time. How much could be left? Two hours. How many ice creams could they sell? <laughs> the local police department broke out the night vision goggles and found the thief hiding in the prairies where he was subsequently arrested. It is safe to say the man is now in a blizzard of trouble, and mm. that's not only insane, it's asylum. Blizzard. You went through all that for the blizzard of trouble? <laughs> yeah. Yes. You've hit the rock bottom. Yeah. I think it also played into some of the news in uh, Colorado. Can't you just high in the hallucinogenic mushrooms. Google and, like dick and fart jokes and just see what I'm comes not, up? I can't be one-dimensional like the cigar. This, is, uh, this story is not completely vanilla, but it's you know you could, could have added some things to that, but... He's trying. He's always trying. Definitely uh, better than Jonathan's clunker, that's for sure. Well, okay, I got some news. I got some care package news, care package news that uh, 
Uh, people have asked us why we don't always accept new subscribers to the Sky Authority Care Package. Every once in a while, we'd open it up for a little short period of time, a couple of weeks, and then shut it off. Why don't we just always leave it open and people can come and go as they please? It all started when we got numerous emails uh, every week, along with uh, Facebook messages and DMs on Twitter, asking if we can announce cigars that we're smoking on the show uh, or to offer a package of cigars. So you asked for it. So in 2015... Um, we listened, and we started the Cigar Authority Care Package. The Cigar Authority Care Package consists of four cigars featuring on up-and-coming episodes. Shipped at the end of the month, the package of four cigars are $20 a month, including shipment in 2015, and you can cancel any time. We built it up to 1,000 subscribers, opening up for new members once in a while for a short time. Why for a short time? The answer was pressure. We opened it up after a lot of pressure to do so, not that we wanted to open it up. The cost is not only uh, to buy the cigars, but the postage and time to package these 1,000 packs up um, every month is, is incredible. And in the end, it is a financial loss, of course. You have to imagine it's a loss. It is. Uh, but it's good for the show, and it is. But at what cost? Over the past four years, costs have gone up considerably, except for the Cigar Authority Care Package. So here's the idea. Open the care package up to everyone, but the new cost goes from $20 to $24.99. And we have another option. The, uh, the Cigar Authority Care Package Prime, which is an extra cigar, a fifth cigar, for the total of $29.99. $5 more for the fifth cigar, and I promise you the fifth cigar will be well worth it because we're already doing all the work, and we already paid for the shipping, so it all goes into the cigar at that point. Um, for thanks and respect to those that are already Care Package members, we will keep the cost at $20 for the rest of the year. So the one that goes out in November for December will still be at the $20, but the December for going out in January will be at the new $24.99. Uh, and that will happen unless you tell us otherwise. For the January care package shipped in December, you're going to be charged $24.99. Um, I hope it's okay. And if not, all you have to do is what? You go. You could uh, send us an email at info at twoguyscigars.com. Let us know you want to cancel. You could call us at one 224 1-888-224-4272. That's two cigar two. Yeah, if you need to uh, triple A, two cigar two, and stop it, um, or in the comment section, anything, any any way you can get a hold of us that you you want to stop it. If you say I want to stop, well, not it. anything because we may not see a comment on a Facebook feed. So okay. you got to send some sort of message, All some right. email. So I'm sorry, but this is a much needed jump. Uh, it had to be done. There's just no way to keep going. And and there's new listeners all the time, and they're yeah. constantly asking us to get in, and it's like, what do you want to do? The and industry has gone through four years of price increases. Yeah. We haven't had one. Yeah. So And, and hopefully we can get four or five more years of, of the same way, but it's just it's just ridiculous. Of The more more successful we get with this, the more we lose, you know, and, it, and it's just crazy. If anyone wants to begin the care package prime, that goes for the people that are already care package people. Um, it's twenty nine ninety nine, so it's actually going to be a ten dollar increase to you right away if you mm -hmm. go on to prime, or if you wait until um, the January one, then it's only going to be a five dollar increase, but it's still ten dollars because it goes up there from you. Uh, new people twenty four ninety nine starts immediately, and it's opened up right now. It's open up right now. And if you go to Prime, it's twenty nine ninety nine. But if you're a, if you're a twenty dollar guy and you want to go to Prime, it's going to be twenty nine ninety nine. We'll make it worth your while, believe me. Uh, and if you're you a know new, us, if you're a new person looking to describe for the first time, the easiest way to find it is the CigarAuthority dot com. If you're on the desktop site, on the top right hand side, there's a graphic that says Cigar Authority Care Package. Click that; it'll take you to Two Guys Cigars dot com. If you're on the Cigar Authority via a mobile browser, it'll be the graphic will be near the bottom of the page, and it'll be a uh, it says the same thing the Cigar Authority Care Package. Tap it; it'll take you to twoguyscigars.com where you can finalize your purchase. All right, I will not let you down. I will keep the value sensational. I appreciate your continued support of the Cigar Authority, but we just got to do it. Enough is enough, and uh, it, it's just 
got too successful. If there was only 100 people doing it or something, who cares? Right. But this is now getting into some serious, uh, serious loss. Um, so uh, right now it's time for the Don Raphael Offer of the Day. The Don Raphael Offer of the Day is brought to you by Don Raphael Cigars. Everyone has a price. Would you do this? And if so, for how much? And uh, by the way, out in the parking lot Thursday, Wednesday, Wednesday night, uh, a truck came. We were talking to the guy driving the truck, Mike Havey, and Mr. Jonathan had his foot next to the wheel. And I said, what do you want to do? 50 bucks right now if you want to do it. And he was considering it. He put his toe under there. It was kind of a big truck, though. Well, kind of a big truck. Yeah. A monster truck is what it was. <laughs> I don't know if it was a monster truck, but you didn't, but you're still considering it. Uh, we'll see what happens. But today's an easy one. We get one of those big, thick candles, and we light the candle, and all the wax builds up in the inside of it, and you get that, and just like drinking a glass of hot coffee, you drink the hot wax. Drink but, it? But you don't swallow it. Just get it into your mouth. By putting it in your mouth, it's going to then you're going to spit out it already held together as wax. I'll sign up to have the wax drip somewhere else, but I don't know about drinking your mouth? It. No, oh. not my mouth. You know, nipples. Yeah? You're a sick man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that sounds like a fun Friday How night much? to me. 50 bucks. Uh, Pour it in there, do it on the show, it make for good good... Uh, I don't, I don't it, know. It'll help uh, as opposed to taking your clothes off. It'll probably help for the YouTube viewership. That could go viral. You know how you like to go viral. Uh... I like to not do that for fifty dollars. No, if it was like five hundred, five hundred is a lot. I'd consider it. I happen to see somebody on on YouTube or Facebook or something doing it, so I said, "This is this is a good one." The guy had no problem. He poured it in his mouth and then took it out as a whole thing. Was it they've, they've eaten Tide Pods on YouTube? It yeah, doesn't make it a good thing. <laughs> I, I didn't do Tide Pods. I know that makes you sick, but this is just gonna. It's like having some uh, maybe hot pizza, like you eat pizza and. Burn the roof of your mouth, but nothing. No, no, no. Can we, can we have a woman with leather boots and a leather corset dripping the candle? Yeah, it always has to be sexually, <laughs> sexual, sexual. <laughs> um, all right, let, let's get to the final thing here on this cigar review. Um, I'm gonna take a few more puffs while you uh, tell me your last third. Well, I'm picking up uh, the addition of clove. Uh, my lemon zest has gone to lemon bitters. It's more bitter than it is lemony. And uh, there's a, that floral thing that started developing in the last third has become a bit of a coating on my tongue. Uh, not all that pleasant. As far as the complexity goes, I'm kind of split between one-dimensional and multi-layered. I, I like to think a cigar is multi-layered if it has many flavors. This doesn't have a lot of flavors. It's only a couple. So more on the one-dimensional side than multi. What do you got, Barry? I haven't really hit my uh, final third yet, but uh, I am developing a, a little touch of uh, Sambuca, like a little licorice. Really? I have the same all the way through. Jeez, I liked the cold draw. <laughs> it was that maple syrup thing. Mm -hmm. Completely no sweetness to this at all. Uh, it's bitter, rind, pith, citrus, dry, Very all the dry way, all the way through, all the way through. So I got the all I wrote on the third third is the same, and it's time now to uh, give it a give it a number, and um, I'm gonna go to an 84, mediocre. It burns, it burns slow. If I had nothing else, it's it's not. Terrible. There's nothing terrible about it, but not an not an enjoyable cigar for me. Uh, the the biggest take the biggest bad thing about it is a tight draw. Mm. I don't care if you even have a great cigar and it's got a tight draw, you're ruined. Yep. So um, that's where I am there. Eighty four. I uh, came in at an eighty three, just to be one less. No, just I had mine written down already. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I have an 83, but I'm not going to close the book on the 83 yet. I've still got a little bit to go. I just entered my final third, uh, but that's where I'm leaning right now. And at Sullivan, what do you have? Oh, never mind. Yeah. I, I have my integrity. I will not be influenced by your score. Please. 
please. You can't it, even remember what you had for breakfast this morning, so I'm not worried about that. I know exactly what I had. I had sponge. Yes, you did, which was great. I understand. Yeah. Delicious. I, I've had it before. It's great. Sponge. You ever have sponge? No. It's a little snack cookie. It's no. the best. It's the best. It. Uh, all right. That's it. That's all the time we have. Uh, next week, he doesn't actually do the growing of the tobacco, but he does select the tobacco. So much so, he calls his company Selected Tobacco. He is the man and a legend in the industry. Most people in the U.S. don't even know him. Nelson Alfonso from Selected Tobacco joins us live here next week. Until then, you've been listening to The Cigar Authority and on you, the United Podcast Network. You definitely learned nothing in the past two hours, so always remember to keep the lid end out of your mouth. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.